<clears throat> Hello, how are you doing? Thank you for watching Prayer, Praise, and Power with Pastor Chuck. You could be watching any show in the world, but you chose to watch us, and we're thankful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, today is a very special day for me. Uh, I have a very special guest on today. I'm really excited to have him on. He's a man of faith. Uh, he's a man of power, conviction. Uh, he's a friend. He's a brother. I've, I've, I've fallen in love with him, his ministry, his style. Um, and, and, and it's a first because I can honestly say he is, I mean, this is a first on prayer, praise, and, and power. Uh, he is the tallest guest I've ever had. So I want to start off by that. And so, um, uh, Brother Jordan, how are, you, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Yeah. I'm doing fantastic. Yeah. yeah. There, are, there are a couple of times in life where we meet, um, there are people in, 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 in this world that are, have these iconic names. There's, 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 there's Sting, there's mm -hmm. Prince, there's Cher, there's Oprah, and then there's Jorah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's just elite status right there. I want you to know that. That's an iconic statement name. Mm -hmm. So I want, I want you to, when you get ready to market, market it that way. <laughs> With some cool font, right? some cool font, you gotta have it. <laughs> Find the cool font, yeah. Um, I, 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 you know, we've, we, we're in a very political climate. You mm. know, um, there's a lot of stuff going on uh, in the nation um, with, with politics on the left, on the right. They've been at it. They're trying to figure out what's best for the country, what's best for the nation, what's best for our local community. So I want you to help me and settle this debate. And it's, I mean, it's politically charged, and it's been the, the, they've been raging and raving about this for years now. Tell me right now, just, and, and give me honestly, what is best, East Coast or West Coast rap? Oh, West Coast, <laughs> without Coast. a doubt. <laughs> the W. I've oh, got man. the W's, yeah. <laughs> great job, great job. Um, so so you, you like your music guy? You like music? I, oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I heard you, 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 I strum and hum. Mm -hmm. But you actually have a nice voice, and you can actually play. Mm -hmm. I can just, that's all I got. But you actually have a good, good, good singing voice. I wish you would have brought your guitar. You could have played a little bit. Next, next time. time. Next Episode two. <laughs> next time two. This is a two-part series uh, with Brother Jorah. Um, you, are, you are a remarkable young man. Um, the, 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 the first time I met you is, is a very iconic photo. And I, the guys in the back, they're going to pull it up for me. It's a picture with you at uh, Victoria, um, what's the name of the church? Uh, is it oh, Veronica, Veronica Springs, Springs. Church. I say I always mm -hmm. say Victoria, but it's Veronica Springs Church. It's, very, it's an iconic shot because we were in the midst of a Holy Ghost experience. The, the spirit was very heavy. It, the people were, were falling out. They were being slain in the spirit. They were collapsing as Dr. Sampuebo would say. In America, we call it slain in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Dr. Sampuebo says that they just <laughs> fell out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, right? Simplicity. And so you see in the shot what was going on there. Um, mm -hmm. That's really what was going on. Then I look over in the corner and there's just a gap. You kind of moved out of the crowd and then all of a sudden there's a picture of you just sitting there in the middle of, of the audience. There it is. That is the shot where I fell in love with you. Because when I was trying to capture the moment, you were capturing the word. Mm. And, and I thought, this is the guy that I got to get to know. Mm. And I'm just digging on the surface of getting to know you. Um, you've been in ministry for how long? Wow. Uh, going in about seven or eight years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. at, the, at the level or the degree that I've been mm -hmm. at the House of Prayer, mm -hmm. about seven or eight years. At the House of Prayer, what is that? Uh, Santa that? Barbara House of Prayer. Mm -hmm. Santa Barbara House of Prayer, it's a parachurch organization. Mm -hmm. We. Uh, activate and equip the saints mm -hmm. in their spiritual gifts mm -hmm. and um, we have a prayer strategy for the city we pray for all the prayer for all the pastors in the city mm -hmm. every thursday you guys pray for me too right yeah <laughs> we do i need it <laughs> well they say that yeah. pastors kind of had you know one of the hardest roles in yes. the community right they hear everybody's stuff yeah. and they carry loads with people yeah. and so yeah, we pray for all the pastors. Um, we've had about seven years of prayer on Thursday at lunch, mm -hmm. praying for the pastors, and we'll even send them a note of just anything we feel that the Holy Spirit prompted us to pray for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've just taken a sabbatical on that, though, actually, mm -hmm. after seven years. Mm -hmm. um, but also the House of Prayer is, um, it's a Jesus encounter right in the heart of downtown Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. 
And um, where is it located? It's a uh, two de la Guerra, so it's actually in Paseo Nuevo. Mm -hmm. So there's the movie theater, and uh, move over to the right. There was a glass glasses hut there, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then uh, up the stairs, mm -hmm. there's a loft up there, mm -hmm. kind of like the upper room, you know, where Jesus had his. I I hear that 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 is a uh, an anointed spot with some history behind it. Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. you were there when I shared yeah. the story. Yeah. One night yeah. on the yeah. Friday night, was, that's our encounter night, mm -hmm. uh, this older Hispanic lady came in mm -hmm. and she couldn't even speak English. And I don't remember who she spoke to, but she just kind of kept making some noise. And so we finally, someone said, hey, you need to hear what this lady's saying. Mm -hmm. And so they go up to the front and that location actually used to be a bar. Mm -hmm. It was actually mm -hmm. a strip dancing, like training place. There was strip dancing pools mm -hmm. in, the, in the place when mm -hmm. we first moved in. We, cleared them all out. Oh, thank goodness. Yeah, and uh, she came and she said, wow, this place was a bar. I actually mm -hmm. came in here and anointed it with oil, Amen. just proclaiming it, claiming it for the kingdom of heaven. Amen. And she comes back years later and we're praising, worshiping wow. Jesus Christ in this place. Wow, praise yeah. God. The power, the power of prayer. Mm. Amen. You, I know you to be a praying man. Um, what, what, is, what is your prayer? What is your mm. prayer? Like my personal prayer or? Your, your personal prayer for yourself, for the city, for your family, for the world. What is, what is, what do you, what do you pray for? What is, what, what, are you, what is your prayer? I think most of all to see God's kingdom manifested here on earth. Mm. I would love to see regions and territories just really taken over by the kingdom. Mm. So much so that if you're from Los Angeles and you're driving up to Morro Bay, mm. you drive through Santa Barbara and you go, wow, I, I don't know what that wow. was, but as I drove through Santa Barbara, I could, it, it was smooth, it was easy, wow. right? People don't fully know what the presence of God is. People can be in the presence of God and not, and not fully God. recognize what it is, right? Wow. We see that with the Israelites, actually, like mm -hmm. in the desert at times. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I'd love to see a territory, a region, just fully taken over wow. by the kingdom of heaven, you know? Wow. There's no sickness there. Wow. There's no offense. Because in the kingdom of heaven, in God's kingdom, there's no offenses. Wow. There's no pains. There's no sickness. Wow. And I believe that's possible. Wow. We were we were we were at an encounter once, and a, 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 a member was talking about um, these unholy portals opening mm. up, and they were focusing on that. And mm. your statement was, "Well, what about the portals to heaven?" Mm. And I was like, "Oh, that dude. That's why I love you. You 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 made God. You you made you you made me pump the brakes and look at it <clears throat> at another at another level." Mm. Um, is, is that something you just you study to get, or is just it just happens, or the Lord puts it? How does that work? The open portals, or just awareness of God's presence, or how do how, how do you all of it? How do you see? How do you, how does that work? I don't. Well, I have learned that what you honor, mm -hmm. what what you make room for in your life, will expand, mm -hmm. and so that's why people who uh, there's a lot of stress, a lot of worry, anxiety. Their, their focus is put on that. It kind of seems like everywhere they turn, there's another fire to put out. There's another issue, right? Mm -hmm. But what you focus on, what you give your energy, time, I, I use the word honor, honor mm -hmm. what you value, mm -hmm. it will actually expand and open up. Mm -hmm. And so at an early age, for me, one of the things that I really had a, a honor for a value in my life here was God's presence. Mm -hmm. I encountered it really early on when I was young. Mm -hmm. And after that, I I would go to my room and I would pray and I would say, Lord, I want to I want to feel Your presence or hear Your voice or I I know I can encounter You. I know mm. You're alive. I know You're real. Yeah. You know, thank You for the Bible, but You can also speak to me directly. I want both through Scripture and directly. And so, uh, the open portal, like I said, I believe it has to do with just a a, a valuing of of His presence of of. His voice in our life, guiding us, leading us, the Holy Spirit promptings that, that we all have in our inner heart and our spirit, valuing those, mm -hmm. listening to them, making room for them, mm -hmm. even journaling them or keeping notes on anything. I felt like the Lord showed me this, or I was reading scripture, the scripture popped out. Write that down. Yeah. That's your story That's with so God. Yeah. You start yeah. to build a history with Him. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> I, um, you, you bring me back to a point when I was a young man, 19 or so years old, 17, 18. In, in, a, in a huddle, football, play football. Mm. And I was never a great football player. Mm. So, Me neither, don't worry. But I was, but I was <laughs> at least I made the team. I didn't get cut. <laughs> so I was on the team. And I remember our, our, uh, our team captain, Melvin Patrick, who was now a pastor out of, out of state. Mm. But I remember this guy giving this 
prayer for the team before a game. And once again, 16, 17 years old. But when he started speaking that prayer, that was the first time I realized that I, myself, personally, human flesh, could speak to the Lord. Mm. And that was, that, that team huddle was my portal. Mm. That's like, oh, oh, yeah. it can happen. I can, I do have access. Mm. And that, when you say portal, where, where are your access? And that, that takes us down to, it break, to me, it breaks it down to our everyday life. Mm. And I can either I can either walk walk in in stress or or misery or anxiety, or I can walk in victory and glory and or in His presence. And mm. to me, that's what uh, when you say portal little, we have a, we, we, what we call it's right out here. It's called the the in, this, in the shop behind us. It's the <coughs> Santa Barbara Harbor. Mm. I think of spiritual harbors. You can either mm. be in that harbor and mm. be in a safe and be able to anchor, or you can be out in the rough seas and the, you know beyond yep. the channels, you know, and yep. be tossed and driven. And so that, when you say ports, I look. I need that safe place, mm -hmm. and and that's what that's what I feel when I'm around you. I feel that safe place. <laughs> I feel the same way with you, <laughs> honestly. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God. We we've known each other for maybe three years, two three years now, give yeah. or take. Um, and I've learned so much from you. Mm -hmm. um, the first time I, I heard you, you preach, you said that you, you, you had you said something about you being like, ah, uh, because I was sitting on the front row. I mean, I was on the front <laughs> row, like, like, bring it, bring it, he's gonna preach. It. And you were like, what is this guy? He's a, but I knew, I knew, and there you are. I knew you, were, I knew you had a word for me that day. Forget anybody else. I knew you had a word for me, and you did, because you talked about resting, mm -hmm. and resting in peace. And that was so affirming to me, because I needed that. Like I like said, as pastors, we need. Mm -hmm. And I was, you know, sometimes as pastors, we do struggle. Mm -hmm. Life is not always easy, whether you be the pastor or whether you be the, the addict. Life is not easy. Yeah. Some, there are some ups and downs. And so yeah. I was in a in an uneasy pastoral place, mm -hmm. <laughs> hallelujah. Mm -hmm. But I knew I needed to hear from the Lord. Mm -hmm. And you brought peace, restored peace back into my life. Mm -hmm. And I honored you for that mm -hmm. because you did open up a portal mm -hmm. of peace. I like, Amen. Oh. And, and I, I honor that. I always, always think that everyone has a word for us mm -hmm. if we open up our eyes and ears to hear it. Amen. Yeah. Um, yes. You, you speak... Um, you have a couple of speech, speaking again. I don't want to skip any of this down. We're just only 45 minutes in the show. We got to look at you teaching again. You guys such a, a deep teacher. <laughs> there, there are, so in this life, we've, I found that there are some teachers that, 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 that sugarcoat the word. But mm -hmm. you, you always, you, you like, you scrape all, you scrape all these sprinkles off. <laughs> you, know, you, sprinkle, you scrape the things off and get into, get into, you know, the, the meat of it. And I, I love that about you. Um, what, one thing I wanted to ask you, other than my question about music, um, only two questions for you today. Mm -hmm. um, what is, what is your favorite verse in the Bible, and why? Hmm. Mm -hmm. Man, well. I'll say recently, because I think as time goes on, mm -hmm. you know, scriptures, they mean different things to you in different seasons of your life, right? Mm -hmm. And even as you grow, as you develop, your perspectives change, mm -hmm. and you might read a scripture you read five years ago, and it, mean, it pops, Holy yes. Spirit's on it. Yes. It means something different to you. Right now in my life, uh, I would say I like Jeremiah fifteen sixteen. Mm -hmm. It says, when your words came, this is a prophet speaking, and he's talking to the Lord. He said, when your words came, I ate them, they were my joy and my heart's delight, for I bear your name, O Lord God Almighty. And uh, there's just something about when the Lord speaks to us, right? There's <laughs> some yes, when yes, you, yes, Lord, yes. help me right now, or, or you know, give yeah. me a word, help me understand something. Even even if life's really good, sometimes a friend comes to you and they're, they're sharing an issue with you. Lord, give me some words to encourage them. There's something about when He speaks, when your words came. And I like how the... The, the prophet Jeremiah, he says, I, I ate them. They were his sustenance. They were his food. Yeah. You know, they, they were his life. Yeah. Food, wow. food keeps us alive, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. There's something about that. He said, when your words came, I ate them. He, I, th I think the Hebrew word actually means devour. Mm -hmm. I devoured them, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, wow. yeah, right now, that I, I really love that scripture. Yeah, man, I, I've been trying to, you know, whenever I, whenever I teach on Sunday, I try to, 
I try to make the, the Bible come to life. I try to, I try to make the word, uh, I try to activate it in real time, you know, right now time. Uh, and when you said that, it, it brought me back to a moment where, where that happened for me. And uh, it was shortly after my son passing, and I remember just being heavy. I was just heavy. I was fighting mm -hmm. over the depression, fighting over the grief, fighting over the, all the mixed emotions that a loss has. Yeah. And, I'm, and I'm searching the scriptures. I searched the scripture for an answer, and I just, it just wasn't falling. I read the book back and forth, and I, I just couldn't find it. And I was, I was working in Long Beach as an assistant with mm -hmm. another young, I say younger, but he was a seasoned pastor who needed a younger, and I'm, I thought, you know, I was young. But uh, he's a senior pastor who needed an assistant, and I was out there working with him. <coughs> and here he is on Sunday morning. He says, Pastor, uh, well, Reverend, <coughs> could you read the morning scripture for me? And he says, well, what do you want me to read? And, this, and we're like right there, right before. He needs to be, yeah, just get up there and just read whatever. Just read what's ever on your mind. Just read mm -hmm. something, whatever. And so I did the normal thing. I, you break your Bible out, <laughs> and you got some highlighted parts that you have this yep. year. So I, I've been, and my, my book was open. I open up the book and, and I go to the, not the, yeah, the Beatitudes. And I'm reading and it says, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Mm. And I've read that hundreds of times. Mm. But it was at that moment where like, oh, it became real. And you, like I say, you read it a hundred, you can read it over and over and over again. But yep. in that moment, that's when it made sense to me. Mm -hmm. And this, that's the power of the, you say the book is, is, is living, and that's the power that I get from that living document, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've, I've written a lot of books. I'm trying, I've not written, read a lot of books. Oh, I was like, you, you know? gotta share them with me. I didn't know you've written <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm speaking prophetically right now. That's a prophetic word. Amen. Hallelujah, I received that. I received that. <laughs> I received that, hallelujah. Sometimes the utterance comes, that's a live word right there. I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna receive that. Thank you, Lord, you gave me utterance right there. Hallelujah, you're gonna make me shout right now. I'm gonna claim some other stuff tonight. I claim, Amen. I claim Start making blessings. declarations, <laughs> yeah. I claim blessings and favor on us right prosperity, now. Hallelujah. Providence. Prosperity, providence. I was saying, so okay, so that was man. You got me already. You got me. <laughs> the, that that and that and so that and I think that's part of what the book does. It, it does it does open up. It does evolve. It does mm. once again. It, it's not just black and white. Um, you do this as well, and this is to me the art and craft of being a good teacher, preacher, prophet, all of that which you are. Um, I always say that the Bible is like a, a it it's like a coloring book. Hmm. It comes in black and white with lines, hmm. and it's up to the preacher, the teacher, the prophet hmm, to put color good. and depth in it. And you are very good with putting color and depth on the story. The hmm. story is like, yeah, you read the story before, and the story says blah, 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 blah. But when you teach, you're like, oh, 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 my goodness. Oh, you're an oh, my goodness kind of teacher. Hmm. I've never heard hmm. you speak and not me get on the edge of my seat like, oh, that's an oh, that's an oh goodness moment. And so I'm grateful, and I think that's the jewel that, that to me, that proves um, your validity, it proves your power, it, mm. it proves your humility, it proves your, your, your study, mm. because you wouldn't dig up stuff like that if you weren't really studying. You, it wouldn't fall on you. And so that, that, that lets me know. I, I've been able to preach some sermons sometimes, um, and maybe you've gotten to this point and like any uh, baseball players had a bad game mm -hmm. and I preach some sermon like that was not my A game <laughs> you know you, you just kind of know you know, yeah, you you know, feel it, it, you know. It, it wasn't my A game mm -hmm. but I every time you speak up step up it's your home run hitter mm. and I'm not just trying to blow smoke but you're you're that guy and so I'm I'm grateful to know you mm -hmm. uh, and to be able to be able to call you a friend in, this, in the ministry likewise um, so you, you, you've been doing this for so long. What is, what is next for you? What level are you at now? And then what is next in your ministry? Wow. Um, you bring some good questions. Mm -hmm. You bring some good questions. <laughs> What's next? Mm -hmm. I think uh, I'd like to continue speaking mm -hmm. and just uh, really I'd, I'd like to to be obedient to the lord as i speak mm -hmm. you know there was a two sundays ago i think i did a short word when uh, mm -hmm. lewis played guitar Play, yes and wow. during worship i yeah. I, I, I saw in my mind's eye and my spirit uh 
what was it, Psalm 96, I believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I got up and I started to read Psalm 96, wow. and yeah. we could just yeah. feel feel that yeah. that wonderful presence of yeah. the Lord. Yeah. I'd love to to yeah. start to operate in that ju just place of obedience while I speak. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we prepare our word, but then we get in front of people. Mm. And some, we've talked about that. Yeah. Sometimes you throw it out and you go, the yeah. Lord showed me something completely different. Yeah. And it takes a little bit of a, 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 bit of a risk, yeah. doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. I, I remember one time I was going to speak on, uh, I don't remember what I was going to speak on, but I was in the back of the room. It was worship time. Mm -hmm. I felt clearly, I just felt, go to, uh, what was it? It was First, first Corinthians 12. Mm -hmm. And I want you to teach on the spiritual gifts. Mm -hmm. I hadn't prepared anything about the spiritual gifts. I'm yeah. in the back of the room there on the second to the last worship song. I'm reading to 1 Corinthians uh, 12. Mm -hmm. And as I go up there, it's like, am I really going to try this? <laughs> I'm going to wing a complete yeah. sermon. Yeah. And I said, yeah. okay, Lord, I'll risk. Yeah. And it was, it was wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. It was so yeah. profound. I was getting just revelation as I was yeah. speaking. Yeah. You know, I mean, we, we create an outline. We create a, uh, a framework. Mm -hmm. And we just, we let the Lord bless it, yes. you know. And yes. sometimes when he's coming to bless it, if we stick to the framework, we miss what he was trying to do, wow. you know. Wow. Yeah. It says that God gave him the framework for, for the tabernacle. He gave it to Moses. Mm -hmm. He gave him exact measurements, mm -hmm. exactly what the framework was supposed to be like. Because it was a mirror, it was a picture of what was in heaven, right? Mm -hmm. And then when they were done building it, they stood back. And it mm -hmm. says the glory of the Lord filled that wow. place. And I think sometimes in our life we can we can have that framework. We set it all up, yeah. and God will come with His supernatural over our natural. Wow. Absolutely. You know. Yeah. Sometimes we pray. We say, "I want to walk in divine health." God, yeah. by Your stripes I'm healed. I know it's possible. Mm -hmm. And then we go eat McDonald's three times this week. <laughs> right? Sometimes I'm guilty too, oh, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but the Lord's. I yeah. believe the Lord's saying sometimes, yeah. "Give me, give me something to let my blessing land on." Mm. Yeah. I, I want to land on it. Yeah. Another one, for instance, finances. Lord, help me pay my bills. Help me pay my bills. The Lord goes, I genuinely want to, I want to bless you. You know, in, yeah. in uh, Genesis 39, it says that Joseph, he succeeded at everything he put his hand to. Amen. So much so that other people saw it, right? I've yeah. spoken on this a bit. Yeah. Potiphar saw yeah. it and he goes, oh my goodness, there's a blessing on this guy. And he starts giving him more and more duties and responsibilities yeah. to the point where he's taking care of everything at Potiphar's house. Yeah. Hallelujah. I think the Lord wants us to just to do what we can do in the natural and he'll pour his supernatural onto it you know yeah. 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 and so um i'm not sure how i got there Amen. exactly well, but I, uh, just whatever's next for me i, I, I wanted to be led of the lord yeah. led yeah. by the holy spirit yeah. and i will do everything i can to obey Amen. that that's that's a powerful statement because i think you are an obedient person you you the joy that i know is an obedient person who, who takes the time to silence self and allow his ears to hear mm. and then act. So a lot of us hear but don't act mm. or hear and dismiss or hear and blow it off or whatever. But you're, you're in, you, you were talking about being in the back of that room as this praise and worship was going on. I've been in the back of that room too when praise and worship was going on and I'm pacing back and forth and I'm trying to, you know, you know, get myself, get my game thing going, you know, like 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 a, a football player in the locker room before the, you know, trying to get myself going. And I know that that that's that that is part of ministry when you're you you mm -hmm. spend a week, depending on how much time. I'm a pastor, so every week I have to have new material, right? Like a comedian, right? right? <laughs> you have to have new material. You have to keep your material fresh. Mm -hmm. And so whatever it is you're studying on, it could be it could be Jesus wept, but there's a whole okay. So it was Jesus. And he wept. That's like 10 different sermons in just two different words, right? And so I know you can do, there's a whole lot of study and prep time goes into that. And for you to be so obedient to the Spirit of the Lord saying, okay, I know what you studied, I know what you wrote, I know what you prepared. However, this needs to go to the people today. Mm. And he, dry, he downloads it. It's an instant download. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I've been in that position. It's, and it's like, it's like being a trapeze artist with no net. It's like, uh, there's there's no safety zone. <laughs> yeah, you're looking down, right? <laughs> like, oh Lord, you know, there's no yeah. net down there, right? <laughs> and I gotta do this. I gotta do this performance. What we say, <laughs> and that also comes with being able to read read your audience. Um, mm. I, I bring up the comedians because to me, comedians and pastors are about the same. They, they do the same thing. They they step in front of this audience of people who are expecting something. Mm. They want you know, comedians audience. They're expecting a laugh. Mm -hmm. Our audience is expecting some Jesus, and so 
You sit up there, you tell the story, and their punchline brings a laugh. Our punchline is Jesus, which brings salvation. Mm. So you do that. You're so you're so artistic when you do it. Um, is is that something? Did, is that something that you've trained for? You went to school for? You did? Is it just a gift that comes with what you do? I mean, how did you get to? How how that happen? I, I truly believe it's a God-given gift. Mm. Yeah, mm. and I just want to say I'm glad. Thank you for all your kind words. It, mm. I'm glad it blesses you because. Oh. Man, sometimes in my mind as I'm reading through Scripture, I'm sure the Lord, He gets tired of me. <laughs> Not completely, but I, I dissect things so much in my mind, you know. Mm. Sometimes it's like the Lord says, you don't have to understand everything, Jorah. Yeah. Just take down what I'm showing you. Because I got, for everything He shows me, I have 50 questions. Yeah. Yes. Says, don't yeah. ask anything right now. Just yeah. write down whatever yeah. I'm showing you, yeah. you know. Yeah. So I'm yeah. glad my sermons will bless someone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's amazing. You make that statement about us questioning the Lord when he gets it. I think it's, to me, I think it's healthy for us to say, Lord, are you sure? Are you, is that for me? Is that really for me? And then he will normally send you validation or he'll like smack in the back of the head. But I, I, I honor you for saying that because I think it, it is, I mean, I, I think that's part of our maturity is asking questions, the why question. Well, why, Lord? Why? Mm. Why? I, don't, I trust you. Well, why? Mm -hmm. I want to know, why am I doing this? Well, it's to bless the people. Okay, then I can do it. Mm. But or, or you know, so I, I love the why question. The why means... I think my question yeah, is yeah. the how. The how. That's a big yeah. one for me. Yeah. How does this work? Yeah. Even, yeah. even yeah. things, the spiritual things, yeah. like, like yeah. a supernatural healing. Mm. How, Lord? How, how does, does it work? work? Yeah. I want to know how it works. And who am I going to bless? Yeah. 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 And of course, who? he doesn't tell us why. Because yeah. right. then we turn it into a formula. Yeah, right. If I know exactly how it worked and I can make you it. You want to duplicate anyone it. Anyone I put my yeah. hand on, they're going to yeah. get healed 24-7. Yeah. Yeah. The Lord goes, that's your own formula. You yeah. don't need me anymore. Wow. Yeah. We're called to partner with him in everything yeah. we do, you know? Yeah. I, I prayed for a homeless guy today, and he's in a wheelchair. He's in front of the, the um, an 800 block in front of Marshalls on State Street. And I see this guy all the time, and something just said, Lord, Lord, I shouldn't say something, but the Lord said, go pray for that dude today. Mm. And I'm like, well, wh what do I pray for? He's a homeless guy. He's living on the street. He's sick. He's, I just, I know he's got a bottle of alcohol somewhere. And what do I pray? What, what, what words? Are, and I said, Lord, keep his eyes open. Keep his heart beating mm. and allow him to see you. Mm. And I walked away. And he's like, that's the best prayer I ever had. People normally, and they, they'll tell, they say for the Lord to clean me up and to fix me and to do all these things for me. Wow. And you just wanted my eyes to open and my heart to beat. Mm. And he's like, that's the best prayer, and I'm like, well, it wasn't me, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. it wasn't me, but that was just, that's all the Lord gave me, you know, the Lord did, didn't give me no 15 minute prayer, it was just mm -hmm. like, keep his eyes open, keep his heart bumping. Keep, and, and authenticity, and, you know, and I walked away. a real prayer. Yeah, and he, and he thanked me, blessed me for it. And then, after that, after that moment, I said, Lord, send me someone else, send me someone else. And I ran into another little lady who's a, a homeless lady, which I didn't know, uh, but now she's on the street. And I was able to pray with her. So mm. I think that's what, what the Lord is prompting us to do, to hear his voice and be obedient. Mm. Uh, has, has there ever been a time when, 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 you, when the Lord spoke to you and, you and you said, no, that's not for me? Oh, man, probably plenty of times. Mm -hmm. I don't keep those at the top of my head, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I can't think of any, yeah, any yeah. big stories right now. I can think of a time I obeyed. And it was, uh, it was probably the first time I gave a, a prophetic utterance or prophetic word. Mm -hmm. I started really early in life. I was about 15 or 16 mm -hmm. going to high school camps, and we'd sit in circles and just practice, you know, listening, mm -hmm. listening. A big part of our relationship with God is listening. listening. If Mercy. my relationship with my wife was all I did was talk and I never listened, that wouldn't be a good relationship. It'd be a short relationship. <laughs> yeah, the <exactly. laughs> shortest one I ever knew. So, <laughs> so the, we'd sit around, we'd pray, mm -hmm. and then they'd just say, just see if anything pops into your mind, mm -hmm. any words, any feelings, mm -hmm. any pictures. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we, we sat around and we really, I got used to doing that, you know, and, and uh, one time I was on a school trip and I was actually in Sacramento. It was mm -hmm. like an overnight trip. I was there for about three days. Mm -hmm. And one of the facilitators of the, of the group I was with, he was talking and I, like you said, on some people you can just sense, you can just see something on them, you know. Yeah. And I was looking at him and just a thought came to me and it was, man, God really loves this guy. Wow. God loves this guy. And as soon as I thought that, I thought you should go tell him, no, nah, right? Yeah. That's that. No, that's yeah. not you, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. That would be awkward. I walked to someone, hey, 
<laughs> Jesus loves you. You know, at the time I'm no, I'm only seventeen, yeah. so I'm it's wow. I'm nervous. New, yeah. You know, yeah. he's yeah. older yeah. than me. Yeah. He's a facilitator. Now I'm not gonna say that. You know, and then it just kept getting louder mm. and louder. And I was like, you should go tell him. You should go tell him. That's all I kept hearing. It's like you should tell him. Mm. So I remember I finally I, when he was kind of off to a corner somewhere by himself. I kind of walked over to him and sheepishly said, "Hey, uh, you know." I, you know, God loves you. <laughs> and he kind of, it threw him off because yeah. not in a negative way, just yeah. he kind of, what'd you say? Yeah. I said, I don't know why. I was supposed to tell you God loves you. Yeah. Yeah. And he kind of got teared up a little bit, right? It's the most simple, like you said, keep yeah. the eyes open, let his heart beat, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we don't know what people, yeah. the Lord wants to speak yeah. to them sometimes. Yeah. And I feel a lot of times we want it to be really profound right. or deep. Yeah. Even when I give sermons sometimes, it's like, I, I want some deep, Lord, deep yeah. revelation. Why? Sometimes it's simple. Simple, yeah. Rest. Very simple. Yes. Rest. You know, it's great for me. just really simple. Yeah. 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 It's amazing. So, so you, 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 you scraped on a topic, and I don't know if you, uh, um, and I think, I think you, you have to do it. You're, this is something that I think we, I do every time I'm on the air, uh, and I think you just kind of scraped on it. Um, you are, you're a single man. You've been single for... Well, I'm married. You're married? Oh, you're married? Oh, oh, <laughs> you, oh mercy. You okay. met my wife. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> tell us, tell us a little about, about you. What's your name? What does she do? Tell us something about her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, her name. You got to go home tonight, Doc. Yeah, you, better, exactly. you better tell her you I love, love her. I love you. I know you're watching. I love you. <laughs> yeah, she's she's beautiful, Amen. man. Yes, yeah. You know how God... Yeah. God, I really lean You married up. Man. Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Me she's, too. She's Me smart, too. man. <laughs> she's smart enough to marry you. Uh-huh. <laughs> when I'm smart enough to marry her. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I hope I am. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah. Um, what's her name? Uh, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Liz. She goes by Liz. Liz. Elizabeth. And, 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 and how long has this angel been in your life? Well, she's been in my life mm. for um, um, 10 years. Mm. Wow. Yeah, 10 wow, years. Wow, wow. All throughout college, we were aware of one another, mm-hmm. and we'd see each other at different gatherings, parties, mm-hmm. whatever, mm-hmm. but I didn't ever say a single word to her. Uh, I knew who she was, yeah. and she knew who I was, but we didn't talk to each other. Mm-hmm. And f- we didn't talk to each other for four or five years after that. Wow. wow. And I heard she had become a Christian, actually, mm-hmm. and I had her her housemate's phone number, mm-hmm. so I said, hey, give me Liz's phone number. I want to mm-hmm. invite her to coffee and ask her about her testimony, how she came to the Lord. Wow. So I took, I invited her out to coffee, and I remember she walked through the doors, and I won't describe it, but I remember every single thing she was wearing. Wow. I, in that moment in my chest, I just felt warmth and peace. Wow. And I remember thinking, Lord, is this my wife? Wow. Is this her? But I didn't hear, I didn't hear a single word from him. I just felt so much peace. Wow. And she came and she sat down, and I just had a wonderful talk. I asked her, how, you know, how did she come to the Lord? How, you know? And uh, years later, she told me, she said, that night when I drove home, I asked the Lord, is this guy going to be my husband? Wow. Yeah. Wow. And then, and then it was really beautiful. <laughs> we were friends for three years wow. before we started dating. See, wow. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that's kind of the way we, you know, me and my wife, we were, we were lovers. We were friends. We became lovers. And now she's just my friend, mm. you know. And mm. it's, it's amazing how that thing evolves. And um, it was it was love at first sight when I met met my wife. I, I loved I loved sharing the story. I won't I won't tell you the the, the crazy story, but <laughs> if if you know what the Noxzema face cream is, it's mm-hmm. it's face cream. It's white face cream the ladies put on, you know. And when I met her, um, all I all I could see was a dark of it was, her whole face was full of cream, and I could wow. see the dark of her lips, the dark of her nostrils. And, and her eyes. Mm. And I'd never met her, I couldn't see anything else. She had big rollers in her head, this was in the 80s, 70s, 79, big rollers in her head, uh, and a long muumuu gown on, so I really couldn't see any, no radiance. <laughs> 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 but I could see the beauty in her eyes, and I knew, and I told her, you're the girl I'm gonna marry. Mm. And she's, this is a quote, she said, fool, get off my porch and slam the door. <laughs> I said, okay, but I'll be back. You know? And 39, almost 40 years, we're still together uh, wow, as, as husband and wife. And so I know, and I say all that to say, I know the importance of a, a, a preacher, teacher, minister, believer, young man, having that help mate with you. Um, mm-hmm. There's only one time quoted in the Bible where the Lord messed up where he made a major mistake. And everybody's like, hey, Lord's perfect. He never does anything. God is great. He never does anything wrong. 
And in the book of Genesis, it says, look, uh, Lord, just he straight up blew it. God blew it. You blew it. You know, you, he knows he blew it when he made us alone. Mm. <laughs> he says, these guys are going to mess it up. They, they need somebody <laughs> to help them out. He says, if dogs and cats and animals, we, he needs another human. Let's get him something. <laughs> we know what he's going to do. He's going to... You know, five minutes from now, he's going to be doing stuff the wrong way. We need somebody to get him on, on track. And so Lord said, look, dude, take a nap. Mm. <laughs> when, I, when I wake you up, it'll be, it'll be much better, okay? And so I'm so glad that the Lord blessed you with um, Sister Liz. She's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful lady. Mm. And I'm just talking about the exterior spirit that pops out. It's just pow. Mm -hmm. And I see that every time I'm around her, she has this, this high energy glow. You know, and, and then and then she's cute, <laughs> <laughs> but the the high energy she has this, and and her power is so humble and so gracious. She's one of those people of of, of great power, uh, and you're the same way. Mm -hmm. Great power and 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 just as much humility. Mm. And to me, that's a, that that is a sign of a powerful person. Mm. You know, I don't have to boast. I'm powerful. I can do all this. But a person who is confident enough to know, and they walk in that. And, mm. it's, and it's the spirit of the Lord that I think both of you guys em embrace that. And so I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see other couples um, such as yourself and, mm. and your wife operate that way. Um, and I, I want you to know how much of a blessing that is to others. Mm. Uh, we never mm. know how many other either single or couple coupled people America are looking at the way you carry yourself. And I'm not perfect. You guys know me. You guys know <laughs> My wife is a praying woman to put up with me. <laughs> She's like, she calls the Lord every day. Look, Lord, fix this dude. But you guys are, you guys are, are, are a beautiful couple. Mm. And I want you to know that the Lord honors that. Thank I you. honor that. And, and the Thank Lord you. honors that. Just continue. You guys poured something into our relationship that helps us laugh more. <laughs> it's an inside <laughs> joke. But you guys have yeah. helped me and my wife to laugh more at each other's <laughs> goofiness. And it's really funny. Because uh, we never know when that joy is going to come, and we always, when we when we start cracking up at each other, it's because of, of how you guys have helped us. <laughs> and we've been together. You, how long have you guys been married now? Four years. Four years. We've been mm -hmm. married, like like almost forty years, and it's it's wow. amazing how much your relationship has poured into us. Wow. It's it's it's, it's amazing, right? Yeah. And so we can never say, oh, well, we sh we should be teaching you. No, mm -hmm. you guys poured into us, and so it it rekindled our joy. Mm. Your relationship has rekindled our joy. Wow, um, amen. Because I Thank think sometimes, th no, I just that's real. Because I think sometimes, sometimes in, you know, the marriage can be, it can be like a, a ship out on the sea with no wind. Mm. It'll just, it's just existing. Mm -hmm. And you guys blew some wind back. <laughs> now we laugh, we joke about dumb stuff, dumb stuff, <laughs> totally dumb stuff. We'll be laughing, and we'll think about you and Liz, and we're like those two. Uh, so, so praise God. We, we, you guys are in our prayers. So we, uh, mm. we, we bless Thank your you. marriage. We bless Thank the, you. we bless the testimony mm. uh, of your marriage. Amen. Mm. Amen. Amen. That's Amen. a sacred. That's a sacred thing. There, are, there's a, there are a couple of sacred sacraments that the Lord designated: uh, the, the, the uh, uh, Eucharist. That's the, the breaking of the bread. Mm -hmm. um, uh, baptism, baptism mm -hmm. and, and, and marriage. Covenant of marriage. Yeah. I have a quick part. revelation yeah. on that. Yeah. Yes. So uh, <clears throat> I, I like studying marriage, actually, mm -hmm. and uh, passion mm -hmm. is something that a lot of people say, you know, well, over the years it goes out. Mm -hmm. And what it is is there's a familiarity. Mm -hmm. You grow really familiar with the person. Yeah. You grow comfortable, and you go, well, they're not trying anymore. Familiarity and comfort is actually really valuable and important in a relationship because mm -hmm. it shows that you've gotten to the point where you're secure with each other, mm -hmm. you're secure with one another, and you're secure in your love for one another. Wow. You know, after an argument, you're not like, oh, I don't know if my wife's going right. to, you know, right. distance herself from yeah. me. or It's like, no, I know we'll get through this. Yeah. And you've grown secure in that. Yeah. And yeah. But what happens with that familiarity yeah. and comfort with one another <clears throat> is, yeah, we, we, we lose that uh, passion of, this is the first time I've ever heard you share this. You know, you don't know someone, right. you're engaged yeah, yeah, listening yeah. to what they're saying in a way that you don't to someone that you've heard their thoughts a hundred times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so what you do is, to keep that passion alive, is you, you go back to, I'm gonna pretend like I don't know any of what you believe right now. Wow. And you listen from that place of, 
I don't actually know what you're feeling or thinking right now. Because, right, we're going to autopilot. I already know how she feels about that. Right. I already know what she thinks about that. <laughs> yeah. But we actually have to retrain ourselves to listen from a place of, I don't actually know what you're going to say in this next moment. And I really don't. Yeah, right. I know what you normally say, yeah. and maybe you'll say it again this time, but maybe one of these times you won't say that. Mm-hmm. And so you listen from that place of I've never heard, uh, I'm going to pretend like I've never heard you share that before. Wow. Yeah. That's powerful. Mm-hmm. We're gonna do a whole show on, on just on that. Late, I know on that. there's more nuggets there. Yeah, it's not coming out the way that I actually I know. know it, but but I feel like people kind of complain about that familiarity. You know, they go, "Oh, I want it." It was so in the beginning, you know. Yeah. But but that familiarity and comfort's good. Yeah. You, you want to get to that point in a relationship where you're secure in the love that you have for one another. Wow. You know, that's powerful. My my wife came home Friday. She came home Friday, and because I know her. And I'm still afraid of her. <laughs> but she came home Friday and she says, Honey, I need the living room and the kitchen and the wall and the, the bedroom painted. Um, and we're going to get up on tomorrow morning to go get the paint. And, of course, I'm, I'm terrified. <laughs> but, of course, you know, Monday afternoon, it's done. You know, mm-hmm. Sunday, it's, it's halfway done. But whatever baby wants, baby gets. You know, <laughs> happy wife, happy life. And I'm a very happy man. <laughs> you know, right? And I've, I've, I've learned to do that. And sometimes I, I try to catch her where, you know, the, the worst thing any man ever wants to hear is, honey, we need to talk. <laughs> Why? <laughs> what? <laughs> so I, I get her sometimes. I say, honey, we need to talk. And she's like, what are you doing? I say, well, what would you like for dinner? <laughs> you know, right? So you have to you have to switch this thing up where the communication is different. Mm. Uh, I remember uh, in our marriage where I, I wear my game face. I don't know if you know, I wear my game face, and I'm not mad. I just I'm in thought about stuff. I come home, I'm thinking, I'm thinking about what am I going to cook? What am I, I going to wash my clothes? What am I doing tomorrow? So I have my game face on, and she I would come home, and she would always she would say, well, "What's what's the matter with you?" Mm. And so I like, what's the matter with you? You know, we, we <laughs> go at it. I'm, you know, you're, you're my problem. We go at it. And so I like, honey, you, just, you know, we need, and we had to communicate on how to. So now when I come home and my game face, she doesn't say, what's the matter with you? She'll say, how are you doing? And I'm like, mm. oh, exactly. Mm. I'm like, oh. <laughs> and then my face changes. I'm doing great, honey. It's so great to see. But just it's those little buzzwords that will, you know, spark reaction. So, and I'm the same way with her. And I walk in on you, and she can look like the Noxzema face of cancer. Oh, you look great today. Wow. <laughs> She's like, I will punch you in your neck. You know? <laughs> like, yeah. say, but, you know, you look great, you know. And so, and that, that's amazing how, how that marriage thing thing works. It's it's not easy. I'm, I'm my hat's off to anybody who, who is married, uh, who stays mm-hmm. married, puts up with each other. Um, I heard a preacher once say, could you be married to yourself? Mm. And I was like, Nope. Wow. <laughs> I wouldn't marry me. You know, I, I sleep with me. I wouldn't do it. You know, uh, so that's amazing. So I, I just, I, I once again, I, I just honor, I honor what you, what your relationship, what mm-hmm. you and what Jorah and Liz has done for my relationship with mm-hmm. my wife. That's powerful. Mm. That's powerful. And that's something you guys just, you probably didn't even know you did it when no, you did it. We right? didn't know. Right? Thank you for sharing right? that. Yeah. That's amazing. So I shared that because you guys are touching lives uh, just by living. The, the best sermon you ever want to preach is the one where you don't have to say a word. Mm. You know, people watch you. So I, I love that about you and that relationship. Uh, I've got like 10,000 other questions to ask. Um, but I, wa- I want to ask you this. Um, you're supposed to be, when, when, when's the next time somebody wants to come and hear you preach? When, when, when can I come and hear you? I don't want to hear you preach like t- tonight. Like, <laughs> what are you preaching at tonight? <laughs> well, I'm, I, uh, I'll say I'm not a fan of Jorah. I'm, I'm a fan of Jesus and Jorah. Amen. Hallelujah. So, okay. and um, I think more than anything, like I shared, you know, I, I, I want to be obedient to the Lord as I'm speaking. But mm-hmm. more than anything, when I study scripture, I just want to know him, you know? Yeah. I want to know him more deeply, right. more profoundly. And, and the, the beautiful part is God wants to be known by us. Mm-hmm. He makes himself known to mm-hmm. us, you know. Mm-hmm. Anyways, you asked about dates. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Dates. Uh, I believe we pulled out our phones mm-hmm. before. Mm-hmm. Did you write them down? Uh, um, yeah. So I, I believe the 4th. Thank you for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so Sunday the 4th, I'll be speaking at Mariah mm-hmm. Bible Fellowship Church. And then uh, August 10th, mm-hmm. I'll be uh, at House of Prayer on a Friday night. Mm-hmm. And then this Friday, I believe, is the 26th. It is the 23rd, mm-hmm. Friday the 26th, I'll be speaking this Friday at Santa Barbara House of Prayer. Okay. So. 
the the I don't know I don't know what to call it. You you correct me. Um, Wednesday night. What what oh. is that? I was blessed. Mm. Um, so I don't know I don't know what you call it. Sometimes you don't know what to call it. You just say, "Ooh, it tastes good." What do you call that? I don't know, but it, would, it would taste good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What was that? Because it was it was for, it was for me. I don't care who else was there. That was for me. Mm. Yeah. So you know, I, I talk a lot about in Ephesians one. It says that the Lord has given us an inheritance in the saints. God right. gave us each other. Mm -hmm. If God wanted it to just be us and Him, yeah. it would be. Yeah. But He gave us other human beings, mm -hmm. and and we can bless one another. And the Lord speaks to us directly, but he also speaks to us through other people. Mm -hmm. So anyways, Wednesday night got started, man, I don't remember exactly when, but months ago, we had a time of prayer, and um, and the Lord's presence just kind of fell really, really heavily. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, the term portal, but I would just call it, there's a there's a thin, thin layer mm -hmm. between God's realm, His dimension, His heaven, mm -hmm. and, and our earth. And so that started becoming really apparent to us as we gathered on Wednesday nights and we said, this is the Lord's time. Mm -hmm. we, come in, we come together to check in with another, one another. How you doing? How's your week? How have you been? And then we pray for one another and we call the Lord down. Just, you know, I read some scriptures last Wednesday. We just read some scriptures and uh, just really waiting upon the Lord, seeing how he leads the time letting His blessing, just His presence, just come and touch us. Amen. So yeah, we do that Wednesdays at 7 at uh, Santa Barbara House of Prayer. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's a total blessing. So I, 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 you know, I'm a pastor and I try not to do the, I came from a very traditional, very boxy type, you mm -hmm. know, and I'm, 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 my tradition is, is, is Catholic and then Methodist and it's very, it's very this. And the people I meet on the street are like that. So, and the people I meet in life are like that. And I said, how do I bring that into an audience? And, yeah. um, and you said something just then, but so when we started doing what we did, uh, it, it just it kind of evolved. And it's a little bit of everybody in there from all backgrounds, the rich, the famous, the poor, the broke, the lost guys like me with Hawaiian shirts who preach on Sundays. <laughs> um, but I did this the, last week uh, at church because I, I try not to do it. We do three things, the same thing in the show, prayer, praise, and power. We do a lot of praying, we do a lot of praise, and, and then we get a word of power. Mm. That's, and that's been the premise for the show, it's been a premise for my ministry. Um, but last week I did something that I think I heard a long time ago, but because you did it on Wednesday, I did it this past Sunday. Mm. Uh, I just, after service was over, mm. after the message was preached, after the songs were sung, after the prayer was given, I just said, let's go around the room and just check in. Mm. How are you doing? How's your life going? How are you feeling? What's, what, what's the Lord showing you? Mm. And that like put, we were there for another hour, yeah. just sharing. And, and, and that's the thing, you know, that the fellowship, you know, the, the, when I first opened up the church, call it, we, we call it Mariah Bible Fellowship. We teach the Bible, mm. but we also fellowship. Mm. And I think that's the purest part of worship is the fellowship, getting to know one another. We, fre we fellowship with the Lord. Mm. We just gave, Lord, I want to get to know you better. You get to know me better. You know a lot about me. I'm trying to learn about. So I think that's the sweetest part of what, what, what I am and what you do is the fellowship. Mm. See, we can teach a lot, you know, trying to get through the, the theological explanation of all the, 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 but it's really about getting to know one another. Mm -hmm. Getting heart to heart, breast to breast, mm -hmm. and that's that's one thing I love about you. That's one thing I love about what you're doing there. That's one thing I loved about last Sunday, which is just us getting to know one another. And and this is something I've also watched uh, as we do that. I see how many other preachers are in the room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Right. They have their own revelation. Yes. They have their own just yeah. nuggets and downloads that they're ready to yeah. just Go. share. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 I, I can't tell you. So I never, I never thought I'd be a pastor. I mean, I'm, I mean, I'm an old, I'm an old dirtbag from the hood in LA. <laughs> I just never thought. But it's amazing what the Lord will you, use. You're a blessing. Lord. Hallelujah. You're not a dirtbag, man. You're such a blessing <laughs> to my life, to my wife's <laughs> life. Seriously. Ooh, praise God. You can put a lot of good things in that bag. Right and so, we're, and we're and we're grateful, man. We're grateful. We're grateful for you to say that. Because um, I always wanted to have that type of ministry where we help somebody. Mm. You know, I never, I never, I never did did it for the money. I never did it for the fortune, the fame. I didn't, I didn't want to do it for a large congregation and to be known and put my name out there. I didn't even want to do this show. You know, I just, I didn't. The guy said, "You, sh you have to do it because," and I, and I was obedient to Mike in the back booth back there. Mike said, "Dude, you need to do the show," and I was like, "Yes, sir." 
obedient because someone else saw something in me that I didn't see. Mm. Just like you saw stuff in me and I see stuff in you and you see stuff in this and we see things in others. And so, and so we call, I call them those, those divine, divine appointments. We're supposed to meet. I'm supposed to see mm. something. I'm supposed to meet. Yep. When I saw you sitting in that, in that back row in that church, I said, this dude is, he's anointed. He's, mm. ooh, I want to get to know that dude. I want to fellowship with him. I want to walk with him. Uh, and I'm so grateful for that. It, who, who, who out there, who out, is there any young person that you see that you're working with or group of people that you're working with? Oh man, what the House of Prayer, there's quite a few. Right? There's Anthony, he plays worship mm -hmm. and he has such a beautiful just talent oh, with yes. his guitar, such a beautiful voice, yeah. you know? Yeah. And um, they're going to be on the show too, him and his group. They, they're lined up. They're oh, already appointed, yeah, to come. Awesome, yeah, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so his group, you know, there's Harrison and, and Luminous, and mm -hmm. uh, there's Michael who mm -hmm. comes on Wednesday nights. Mm -hmm. You know, he's he's a speaker too. Of, mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm just, I can see there's timing, right? Oh, yeah. There's timing on certain things. Yeah. So I try and get him up there. And I actually got that from you, but also from the Lord. Just mm -hmm. you, you, you make room for people. Like oh. you've really made room for me. Hallelujah. And that's a blessing, you know. Like you said, when you see something in someone else yeah. and you make room for yeah. it, yeah. you get blessed too. Yeah. And I get blessed. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. like I said, Michael, he's, he's a good speaker. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just the right timing needs to come along when that window opens. Um, but yeah, I really get fulfilled. I'm not sure how many people's names I want to put out there, but <laughs> I, I get really fulfilled on the same thing, making room for them mm -hmm. and saying, Lord, do you want me to make room for this person? Mm -hmm. And listening to him because he knows the timing you know yeah. and I've seen and I have seen leaders sometimes that'll push a person up they see someone with a gift and mm -hmm. oh we need this role filled yeah. will you do it yeah. and it's like yeah but now's not the time and you can feel it right. Right. they don't carry the experience or the confidence level or there's no one around to mentor them the way they need to be mentored mm -hmm. and and that can harm a person yeah and so yeah, yeah. yeah. that's powerful uh, because I think we are facilitators we are we are we are our brothers keepers. We are our sisters keepers. And who am I to say oh, this person shouldn't go or this person should go? It's my idea to give everyone an opportunity to go. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like that um, when you see people who run the marathon, they just all sign up to run it and they just they go. It's not me to say who finishes first, second, or third. Mm -hmm. It's just me to make sure that they're trained and ready to yes. go. I'm a swim yes. coach, so I, I give I train you as best as I can. I teach you all the tools. But it's really up to that person to step up and mm. you know i encourage them, say you can do it you can do it you can do it. that's what coaches do we you can do it you can do it you know give them all the strategies what to look for but it's really up to that person to be able to to go and mm. so you want to give everybody the opportunity you know we're all equal and there's no bigger better stronger faster it's just who's more willing and who and who isn't and so it's like this timing it's it's it's, it's a blessing once again working with you i'm i'm really interested and i don't want to get my i don't want to get beat up um but I know, I know your bride, she's a powerful lady. I'm excited to have, have I'm, I'm really excited for, you know, to have her, on, not just to speak, but also to have her on the show. Mm. Um, we, were, we were chatting the other day and um, she was just sharing you know, some things that she was interested in doing. And I was like, wow, I could just, I could just it's like a pot on the oven and it's starting to I can just, <laughs> I can just feel it. I can just feel the starting to, to boil. Uh, and so she's 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 ready to go, and so uh, be encouraging to that, you know. Mm. I I so you I know Thank everybody's you. yeah I mean yeah. that's real right. No, so yeah. you guys have heard that's me good. speak and preach and teach, but dude, you wait to hear m my wife preach. Mm. That's the one that that's the gun that's loaded. <laughs> okay. Well, I've heard her sing. Yeah. <laughs> anointed. That's, that's a small part of the gift. When she goes, I mean, she's very an anointed an anointed person, and I think that's. That's one thing I love about her more than anything is I know she's giving. She's so cool with it. She's like the James Bond of preachers, you know. <laughs> she's like, you know, she's like really cool, but she's a, she's really a, an assassin for Jesus because she does it in such a very tactful way. Mm. Uh, she ministers to firefighters. She ministers to half the the firefighters she works with, but she does it in such a where they come to her, mm -hmm. and so when people come to you, it's like, oh, you know that thing is going. She and they come to her for those mm -hmm. words of wisdom and words of incitement. And I come to you for that kind of stuff. You are that person. She is that kind of person. So mm -hmm. I'm grateful. Uh, and I, I, want, I want you to just continue. Let me know as, as you know, when you want to come back on the show. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward 
to being a special guest on your show. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a prayer, praise, and power with with with, with Pastor Jora, <laughs> and I want to be your first guest. <laughs> okay, I'm I have to figure out how to co coin the name. You'll be my first guest for sure. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'll say I, you you spoke it into existence. Here we are, We're Pastor Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> you have to. That's a power. That's a power that comes from the word. You know, um, we could speak mm -hmm. negative. Oh, he'll never do it. He'll never do it. Ah, he's nothing. He's never going to be anything. And that's what they said about that little boy from from Nat. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Yeah. Nothing. There's nothing. What's good, what's good comes out of that? Messiah it's a ghetto. The world. It's a ghetto. But nothing's good's gonna come out of there, you know. And I I love that about the power in that in that word, how it it it, it defeats the negativeness of life. Amen. Amen. Um, what what are you preaching on next? Do you do you know, or do you just wait for the word to to fall on you? Um. Kind of wait for it to fall on me. I I uh, I wanted to share about you were talking about fellowship earlier, mm -hmm. and uh, just how important it is that we do actually fellowship and get into each other's lives in, in a healthy way, mm -hmm. in a loving way, um, and that a lot of times, unfortunately, church can become event based. Yes. Mm -hmm. I just see you at the next you know meeting, mm -hmm. meeting, mm -hmm. meeting, and it becomes event based. But really, the word church is ecclesia, right? Mm -hmm. It's a gathering of believers. <laughs> But it's a congregation, because the word ecclesia can be translated congregation as yeah. well as it can be translated the word church. Yeah. And I feel like congregation gives a more a clearer picture sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. It's a group of people that do life together. Yeah. And the places where I'm weak, you step up and you're strong. And the places where you're weak, I step up and I'm strong. And, and you know, in Jesus, everywhere we're weak, He's strong yeah. for us. But there, there's a difference between God manifesting in, in your life individually and God manifesting Himself in, an, in a whole pe in a community, Amen. in a congregation, Amen. and even in John, I believe it was 14 or 17. I can't remember. Jesus says, "You know, I pray that they are one as you and I are one, Father." And He prays for believers everywhere. He says, "I pray that you be unified." So, you were talking about fellowship and the beauty of that, and how we recently have been getting together and asking each other, "What's the Lord showing you, or how are you doing recently?" Fellowship's really big, I think, in God's heart yeah. for yeah. His people. Yeah. He doesn't want people just showing up to an event and then, yeah. you know, going home and feeling isolated, feeling alone. Amen. Amen. So, praise God. Uh, you've been watching Prayer, Praise, and Power with Pastor Chuck and 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 the next great TV evangelist, Brother Jorah. Um, I'm speaking it. Uh, we just want you to continue to watch the show, um, Brother Jorah. You've got about 15 seconds. Just bless the people with the word of prayer. As we close, yeah, Lord Jesus, I just pray that you would just uh, bless every person that uh, is watching this show. Father, I pray that they would just encounter your love, you. just your presence, Lord. I pray that you would speak to their hearts, God. Yes, Lord. I pray for clarity in their minds, Lord, yes, Lord, peace in their emotions, God, health in their physical bodies. And we just declare that you are the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, God. You are the Messiah, you are yes. the Christ. Thank you for your blood. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Give me that. <laughs> Love you.